When we were in Mombasa, it was uh, it was a cool experience. One of the normal things, I guess, that comes with Mutatus is uh, being continually heckled. No matter where you go, people are always coming up. As soon as you stop or even slow down, people come up to your window and try to sell you stuff. I guess that's just how they make money. Trying to sell us stuff, sell us stuff, sell us stuff. We had to say Hapana, which means no, or Nikosawa, which means I'm all right, or Asantisana, which means thank you very much. Um, so while we were in Mombasa, we went for lunch and it was very good. Mm. We had um, biryani. Um, it was our first time having it and it was very, very good. It was, it was like a good. tomato sauce based dish with mm -hmm. rice. Uh, we saw the Mombasa tusks. Yes. Which is tusks. the tourist thing you have to see yeah. when you're in Mombasa. Yes. The tusks were put there when the royal from the UK came to visit. Mm. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, Baraka, Richie. Uh, from Rainbow House. He was a great guide and friend. We went to Fort Jesus. It was pretty cool. We got to see uh, the place where the Portuguese set up a uh, fort there and uh, the architecture looks like uh, Jesus opening his hands. Um, roughly. It's, I mean, it's not perfect. But it was pretty cool. They've got cannons and they had parapets and openings and walls to shoot people and to, to watch the, the bay and they had um, like a secret tunnel and opening area to bring up slaves when slavery was a thing at the time. Uh, eventually the Arabs took over and they that's where the beautiful doors, ornate doors came from. Mm -hmm. uh, that would paired with India. Uh, the, the spikes as you can see on the door, they were added to prevent siege by elephants because elephants' skulls are very, very hard, but a big spike like that would pierce the skull and make us the elephant wouldn't do it. So that was a great method. We saw humpback whale bones, and we got to see uh, miniature versions of the ships and different uh, relics from the time when the uh, port was busy with the Portuguese and with the Arabs. Mm -hmm. And so the Arab people came to Fort Jesus after the Portuguese people and the Arab people started to use the port for the slave trade and that's when it got really big there. We got to see Old Town Mombasa a little bit. Uh, it was really nice. It, uh, it had a lot of colors, a lot of uh, beautiful buildings. It was really nice. We got to go down to a little waterfront pier and see that, it was rewarded with a really nice view. The thing is, is that seeing Mombasa would probably take days because mm -hmm. it's such a big city, it's so rich in culture. So we're really hoping to go back again with our friends Lynn and Tusha and uh, see it some more. They said they're really passionate about showing us the temples, the, the Indian temples there. And yeah. Well, because there's a lot of um, Muslim culture there just mm -hmm. because it was, um, created by, the culture there was created by the Arab people, so there is a lot of um, Muslim connections there. You can even see in their advertising on the streets that they're, all of the advertisements have the people wearing the uh, hijab? I think so. Hijab. Um, and it was, um, it was interesting coming from a place where while we're in uh, Watamu, it's very uh, Christian. Christianity based so all of the cars have God bless you on it and all this stuff but in Mombasa it was very very different So we walked from our apartment to the ocean and we were meaning to go snorkeling. However, if you go down to the beach with a snorkel... Turtle Bay, specifically. Yes. If you go down to the beach, Turtle Bay, with a snorkel, they want you to pay the park fee to go into the water. Um, you can swim for free, but if you have a mask on, you have to pay money. And that day, Dan and I did not want to pay any money to go snorkeling. It's a large so amount. So we decided that we would go to the different area, which is called Blue Bay. <laughs> it's 
Okay. <laughs> so hey guys, we're uh, we're here at uh, the beach. Okay. At Blue Bay. And currently the tide is really low and we're going to see uh, if we can find anything. The tide is low, it's kind of like swamp, but it's pretty cool. We went at low tide, which was actually a blessing in disguise. We went there expecting that we were going to be able to swim out, but in Blue Bay, um, it's very rocky and spiky, and so it was re really difficult to walk out into the ocean um, without any uh, shoes on, without any wet shoes. So yeah. we decided to just explore, and we saw some cool stuff. This apparently is the coral reef. There's two reefs and this is the first one. Um, and right now it's dried up, as you can see. And the fish go out there nearly to the second reef um, to go uh, relax, because right now it's low tide. It was fun, we got to, because the, the tide was low, we got to see a lot of creatures that we normally wouldn't be able to see. We got to see these little rock beetles that embed themselves in the side of coral. Um, we got to see uh, crabs. Some type of amphibian. We got to see mud skippers, which is really, really cool. Some other bays which were there. Um, we saw like a. We basically were standing on top of the, the ledge and just looking out into this beautiful ocean. Yes. Um, which was kind of cool. So, the way the bay works all around Watamu is uh, there is low tide and high tide. Low tide goes down about. I don't know, what would you say, like eight meters below sea level? Well, sea level. Uh, and then it rises to about mm, 10 meters, eight, eight to 10 meters above. It's it's a big difference, actually. And so you can see some hours. of... It takes two hours for it to, ri to go down and to rise up. And you can see in some of the rocks and islands how it tapers outwards, and that's because of corrosion from the water, and that's how high sometimes high tide goes. Um, there, the way the reef is, is there's two reefs. There's the first reef, which is where all the cute, safe little fishies go, and it's really nice and you can swim. And the second reef is the bigger reef that's farther out, and that keeps the bigger, the bigger fish out. So that keeps out the hammerhead sharks and the other bigger sharks. It keep, keeps away the dolphins. Um, it keeps away, well, it keeps away some of the jellyfish. Some of the time they get in. Um, if the high, if high tide is really, really high, sometimes a shark will come in, so if they say that you shouldn't swim out in high tide too much, uh, you should be a bit careful with that. Um. So, I got sick. After our trip to the ocean, to Blue Bay, I forgot to wear my hat. We brought sunscreen, but I forgot to wear my hat. I took in a lot, a lot of sun. Um, I think I was also just drinking water that was either over -filter filtered, which bothered my stomach, or water that wasn't filtered enough. But I got a stomach bug at the same time, so I was pretty much out of commission for about four days. It was brutal. It was the worst. Um, so I, uh, I, there was a big lull in, in social media posting and talking with you guys. <laughs> Sorry. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. But we're not hi yet. Cheers. It was a cool place. It um, is all about reusing glass bottles and reusing plastic and reusing tires, trying to make everything eco friendly. There's even that canoe over there that's made out of wood, they made into a swing. Yeah, and they have uh, their big thing that they're known for is their compostable toilets so they use um, we have them in Canada now too but it's where they have a filter in the bathroom where you 
pee into and then the other stuff goes down the big hole and you put sawdust into it and you use it for compost later. So this is what their big thing is there and they want to set these toilets up in Kenya. It's a pretty cool place, yeah. It's beautiful during the daytime and evening. Uh, we went there for a music show. Uh, it's playing right now in the background. It was really, really nice. Honestly, it was one of my favorite nights and favorite times in all of Kenya so far. It was very relaxing. We got to know Tusha and Lynn and Andrew a lot better. And man, they're cool people. We just really enjoyed it. Yeah, and so this is a cool area down here. Um, so they made the table and chairs there all out of reused tires, which is a cool way to um, prevent tires from going into landfills. And behind those, uh, that bush there is the toilets. <laughs> so overall, it was a really good night. Good atmosphere, and they also had good pizza. Yeah, Italian pizza. Anyways, we suggest you uh, checking it out if you're ever in the area. So Lynn and Tusha brought us to the Arabuko Forest in Gede. It's the um, last forest in this area that is the natural forest. So it hasn't brought in any trees and plants from other places into it. And it is a forest in this area that has elephants in it. And a few years back, the, during a dry season, the elephants almost, they went through a drought and they almost died, but a person decided to put in a water pump so that the elephants had water during the dry season. So this is why we are able to go out and see the elephants at the same time every day because they come out around 5.30 or 6 o'clock to get water from the pump during dry season. And I must say, this was one of the most magnificent things I have ever seen in my life and I can't speak for Dan but the elephant that you see coming close to the fence they call him Makora which means naughty one uh, because he likes to uh, fake charge people who come see the elephants I think he likes to see humans react to him um, it was an incredible experience it was mm -hmm. one of my favorite experiences here in Kenya and I think elephants are my new favorite animal. <laughs> we learned a lot about them too. We learned stuff like if an elephant dies, all of the herd of elephants will stay where that elephant died for a period of time. And then every year at the same time, the exact same day when the elephant died, they'll come to that place and they'll play with the bones and they'll spend time around that dead elephant. and. You know, they, they remember things, they have such a good memory, and they're really thoughtful animals. It's very cool. So one of the craziest experiences I've ever had is uh, right here where Makora charges, fake charges me and a couple people around me. And uh, this is the second time he charged, and I decided to not move and call him on his bluff, and I was rewarded by this incredible, incredible view. 
Uh, not gonna lie, my hands were shaking a bit. Luckily, I have an auto stabilizer, but rightfully so because the fence does not hold an elephant in. The elephant could get out if it wanted to, and it could kill Dan. <laughs> yeah. So he was shaking for good reason. We just want to say that this is an abnormality. We don't suggest getting close to elephants or this close. Um, we suggest you giving elephants a respectful distance and to respect them. And if they start to approach you, to show them respect. You don't want to run. You want to back up respectfully, slowly, and you want to give them space. Or if you're on a safari and you're seeing an elephant, stay in your car. <laughs> So we are really thankful um, and grateful that you guys are able to come along on the journey with us through these videos and thanks for watching and supporting us and we're, yeah, we're happy that you're able to share in our adventure. Yeah, we just enjoy having you guys along and for this journey. It's been an incredible time. Uh, we love you guys. We miss you. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, so you can get the videos, know when they're coming. Anyways, see you later, guys. Thank you.